Hey everybody, Ron Bielefeld, Whistling Wings Photography. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And uh, we're going to talk about the Canon 100 to 500 again. Just like the last video, except this time we're going to talk about how it performs and with the 1.4 times teleconverter attached. <clears throat> now, I did try to use the 2 times teleconverter as well on this lens, but I'm not going to talk about that in this video because I found that with that teleconverter, the speed of this lens, the minimum aperture, is just way too slow uh, for most of what I do. So probably everything, to tell you the truth, that I do, <laughs> which is birds in flight a lot, uh, action type photography with wildlife. So, you know, it, it comes to a point where you just have to... Um, admit when something isn't going to work for you and that and that's one of them so this video is going to concentrate on the 1.4 times teleconverter on the 100 to 500 uh, Canon uh, L lens mated with the R5 right and so you know we'll start out with that topic right there about the aperture right uh, this lens in the beginning isn't super fast at the at the long end, right? It's 500 millimeters and it's f7.1. So now you go ahead and you put the teleconverter on there, the 1.4 on there, and now you're at f10, right? So you're at f8 and f10, 420 millimeters, right? 700 millimeters. So f10 is getting pretty slow right or and and it and it's limiting right i have to I have to be totally honest it's it's limiting for what i do uh can you can you use it is it usable for action uh especially you know birds in flight like i do so much of yes it is if you have good light okay you you really need good light is it usable when you're doing more static stuff even in poor light of course right one of the big advantages of this camera and now the IBIS in-body image stabilization coordinating with the IS, the image stabilization in the lens, is, is that you can hand-hold now even very, very slow shutter speeds, right? So you can keep your ISOs down, your shutter speeds down when you're forced, right, I guess, to shoot at F10 with the teleconverter on if you need to, to get the length uh, using using this lens, right? So it is functional, even in lower light for certain situations. But don't fool yourself, I'm not fooling myself. It's slow when you put the teleconverter on there. So just obviously be aware of that. The way I'm looking at it, I have a 600 f4 Mark II. If I want long reach, I'm gonna be shooting that, right? I'm gonna be putting my 1.4 my two times on my 600 f4 and I'm going to be using you know when I need the length right when I need the reach and I'm going to more use the 100 to 500 for for what it is the 100 to 500 7 1 at the at uh, f 7 1 at the long end and there's a lot of what I do that 100 to 500 will be just fine right and then 7.1 isn't such a big limiting factor because I'm liking, I'm liking to get the 7.1 anyway. So F7.1, F8, sometimes just to get that extra depth of field on my birds, especially larger birds, so you, you get a little bit more of the bird in focus if the bird isn't in the same you know, focal plane that's canted away from you or something like that. So how is the image quality, right? autofocus performance, IS performance, and all that kind of stuff with the 1.4 times teleconverter on here. Well, I mean, this is this is a Canon L lens, and for a long time now, Canon L lenses have been seen by many, many people as the best lenses in the world, right, quality-wise, image quality-wise. Uh, and so you put the 1.4 times teleconverter on here, and you can barely tell a difference in image quality. I mean, with your naked eyes, I mean, it's almost impossible. It's almost imperceptible, really. Anytime you put a teleconverter, you know, on a on a lens like this, you're gonna lose something. You don't get anything for nothing, right? You're always gonna give something up. 
and so you are going to give up a little image quality, but I'll tell you what, from what I can, I can't hardly see a difference. So as far as image quality goes, I have no qualms about putting this teleconverter on this lens and shooting and, and worrying about image quality. There's no, there's no, no second thought there. Autofocus, speed, accuracy, tracking, being able to stay on the bird and stuff like that. Again, I don't really see a difference with just the 100 to 500 naked on the R5 or with the 1.4 times teleconverter on, the, on this lens on the R5. They basically function the same. And that includes animal eye uh, detect and tracking. I, I just don't see a difference. Now, the only thing, you know, again, I don't shoot in darkness, right? I mean, in super, super dark conditions, I just don't very often. I did test this out, and <laughs> I mean, it was barely light out. And I noticed that autofocus had a little bit of a trouble, uh, a little bit of trouble uh, focusing on some birds that were, that were standing in the water and things like that not too far off. Uh, maybe a little more difficult time doing it than with just the one to five hundred by itself naked, right? But good grief, I mean it was <laughs> it was really dark, so I'm not worried about it. In any conditions I'm normally going to shoot in, uh, I'm not I'm not thinking there's going to be any problem at all with gaining autofocus, maintaining autofocus, autofocus speed, things like that. Um, image stabilization, uh, the IBIS working with the IS on this camera. Uh, and lens combination with the 1.4 times teleconverter. Again, it's pretty darn stable. All the way out at 700 millimeters, right? Woo! All the way out, 700 millimeters. I'm hand holding at some incredibly, incredibly s slow shutter speeds. You put it on mode one, and you know I'm shooting 1/50th of a second, 1/100th of a second, 1/150th of a second, you know, 60th of a second stuff like that and it's rock solid steady right video is the same way i mean you're shooting 700 millimeters handheld video and you can get away with it you can uh, like i said in my 100 to 500 review though you've got to pay attention to the modes that you're set on nowadays more than you've ever had to before given that you've got ibis and is working together now uh, if you find yourself in the wrong mode and you do something weird like you know you're in mode two and you're panning and then all of a sudden or you're not panning and then you jerk up and try to get on something that's doing something like this i mean it may do some funky thing for a minute for a second really before it kind of settles in but you really can't expect it not to do stuff like that so all in all i haven't seen it do anything uh very odd at all i think it's performed as about as good as i can expect it to or even hope hope it would with the 1.4 on there, just like it was doing without the 1.4 on there. So, I mean, again, it's, it's pretty amazing. Just watch your, your mode settings. Make sure you're in the right mode for what you want to do. If there's any question at all, heck, if you're shooting fast shutter speeds, just turn it off. Just flip it, up, flip it to off, and uh, you don't have to worry about it, right? But especially for things that you really want the stabilization for, slow shutter speeds, perched or non-moving birds in low light uh, mode one works great i love it best i've ever ever used from canon and canon's been good their is has been really really good for a long time so uh what else let's talk about the limitation of the focal lengths that you get i've already mentioned it a little bit when you put the teleconverter on here you don't get the full breadth of the of the zoom right you're limited to 420 millimeters on the short end here to 700 millimeters on the long end there seems kind of limiting but to me if you're putting the teleconverter on here anyway you're looking for that long end mostly right and so it's really not that limiting for what i do some people yeah is there going to be times where i whoa you know something gets closer and I'd, and I'd love to be able to pull all the way back, right? Like I did with my 100 to 400 and with whatever teleconverters I had on there. Sure, you know, you hate to see that limitation, but in the end, it's not all that limiting because, again, I'm looking for the long end when I'm putting a teleconverter on. Anyway, I love the short throw now, right? This is it, right? 420, 700, 420. So now it's just like, woo, you know, no problem. Don't have to move my hand. I wish there was that kind of throw, 100 to 500. Talked about that in the last video. It's a long throw 
when you're going 100 to 500, you have to reposition your hand a little bit and stuff like that. So, you know, there is that, you know, advantage to, <laughs> if you want to look at the bright side of things, right? The advantage of having the one four on there is you get a much shorter throw for what you can get, right? So, and, you know, when you're, when you're zooming actively while you're shooting, I haven't seen any issues with the one four on here with the autofocus staying on the bird or anything like that or any kind of weird skipping going on. Uh, you know the image in the in the electronic viewfinder or anything like that which I have seen in some other uh, cameras I've tried out <clears throat> in the past especially with adapted lenses and things like that this is smooth as, as all get out it, it works really really well uh, so you know it's it's really for what it what it is and you just gotta stay grounded in, in what this really is with a 1.4 on there um, it's great I, I think it's great. The the thing that kind of surprised me, I guess not too much, because I used to shoot the 100 to 400, and the and the minimum focus distance, you know, as close as you could get to something in focus was was pretty incredible on that lens. This lens is even better. The 1 to 500, you're gaining inches, and when you can get this close to something, and I've got some video that I took as a kind of a demonstration to rather than say it's this many meters or this many feet, you know, minimum uh, focus distance. I did a little demonstration and I'll, I'll inject that video into this, but you're gaining inches better performance with the one to five than the one to four when it's naked. And even when you put the one to four on here, you can still get really, really close to your subjects it is really nice and I was sitting you know, I had I had birds right at my feet basically you know at 420 or even out to 700 millimeters and focusing without any issues whatsoever even that close of course you have to have the lens set to full you know not on the infinity the limited you know three meters to infinity uh, you have to have it on full but again the cycling is so fast and, and stuff, it doesn't really matter. I just keep it on full all the time. And when it's full, it's on full, and the birds are right at your feet, and you're focusing, and it's just like, wow, this is just incredible. And it really is incredible compared to, to some other lenses um, that are out there in this kind of range uh, and compared to what we used to have in the past, right? So th that's a great... That's a great uh, advancement and and you'll you'll see that with this and image quality of close is is just you know the magnification you're getting is amazing on these on these little birds I'm talking about like sanderlings and and ruddy turnstones running around in the sand and the water in front of me it is just uh, pretty amazing so I love that aspect of, of this lens and uh, teleconverter combination is that you're not really losing a whole lot of you're not having to step way back much further back or anything like that when you start putting the 1.4 on there versus when it's just the lens all by itself. So, you know, really happy about that. Uh, it's a huge advantage at times, right? Do a little check on the minimum focus distance with the Canon 100 to 500 on an R5 with the 1.4 times teleconverter, right? So we're gonna see how close we can get to that bird over there in the bush and so let's see so we'll move up right here no problem right on the eye move up to here hey no problem right on the eye and right here bounce around a little bit and Still focuses, but I think we're just inside the minimum distance now. I'm backing, I'm just backing up just a little bit with my body, looking at the bird, and I'd say right there, right there is about as close as we can focus at 700 millimeters with the Canon 100 to 500, uh, the RF mount with the 1.4 times teleconverter. That's if you ask me, that is not bad. That's pretty darn close. So, let's go ahead and take the teleconverter off.
and we'll see compare the distance that we can focus with it just the lens with no teleconverter just so we can have a full comparison here start back a little bit just to give us a little perspective now we're at 500 millimeters right around full of course move up no problem well, definitely in focus. Try and no. No. Moving just my body back. Right there, I'd say. So there's your minimal minimum focus distance without the teleconverter. Not a whole lot of difference. So that's pretty, that's pretty amazing right there, I think. I'm, I'm happy with that. So uh, anyway, we'll move on to another subject about the lens here in a minute. So, I mean, I, I don't know if there's a whole lot more that I can really talk about with this lens. Um, I would love to see, it's just, it just comes down again to the slow speed of the lens with the 1.4 on there in the end, you know, F10 at the 700 mark. Uh, and... You know, now that Canon's come out with the 100 to 500, I don't see them coming out with the 200 to 600, 63, f 63 like Sony did, which I think would have been for me, it would have been uh, of a higher utility than than the one to five. But I'm not going to get rid of the one to five. Like I said, there's times when I need. So I'm I'm looking. I need the one to five, and so I'm thinking I'm going to have one R5 with the one to five on it, and I'm going to have one R5 with my 600 f4. And that's when I'm going to use the teleconverters the most. If I need to, if this is all I have with me, the 1 to 5, and I need that extra reach and the light's good, am I going to, put, am I going to hesitate putting the 1 to 4 on there? Heck no. I'm going to put it on there. It, it works. Don't, it's not like you can't use it. You can. You just have to know the limitations just like everything else. Um, I do wish Canon, I hope in the near future, that Canon comes out with something that gives you that 600 millimeter mark, right, that length with a little bit faster aperture, right? Something around 6.3 or even 5.6 would be would be great. Um, so you could put a teleconverter on there, at least a 1.4, and you're still in a decent, you know, speed uh, range with the with the aperture. Um, you know, there, I've heard talk that they might be coming out with a 500 2.8. Uh, uh, wow, right? I mean, that's, well, I guess if it's a DO, it might not be totally massive, but it that's going to have to be a pretty big lens. Uh, pretty heavy, I would imagine. Uh, so I don't know if that's really the solution I'm looking for. I, I, I just want a lighter, shorter, 600 millimeters at a little bit faster aperture. And then, you know, we'll be able to put a 1.4 on there. And I and I won't have to try to travel or carry around with my, you know, my 600 f4, which is getting, it's tough, right? It's it's big, it's long, it's heavy, relatively speaking, and, and traveling with it's always been a pain. It's really a pain now. It's getting harder and harder to travel with these big lenses and heavy camera bags and stuff like that. So I really hope Canon is is thinking about these things and brings something along relatively soon. How about a 600 f4 DO, right? Super expensive lens, I'm sure, but it will get down the size, it will get down the weight, and we can go from there, you know, and, and put teleconverters on to our heart's content and, and be good, right? So I guess I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Uh, I'm going to put some images uh, down below, a uh, link to images down below in the description of the video. And all of these images, maybe with a couple exceptions, are cropped for composition, but there's been no noise reduction, no sharpening. All of the metadata is there so you can see what the crop is on the, on the image from full size. You can see what the ISO settings were and all that kind of good stuff. So take a look at the images uh, and let me know what you think about the 100 to 500 on the R5 or even on the R6 or, or whatever. And if you're using the teleconverters uh, two times, I applaud you if, you if you use it two times. Let me know what you think. So anyway, until next time, hey, get out there, take some pictures, and overall, you know, be safe. See you next time.